Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I will be reviewing the X-Men. Before we begin, if you would like to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe. Before we get into the video, I would like to tell you that I have a fan on in the background, so hopefully that's not too distracting. Now, let's get into it. I will start off with the story, because this is an older movie, I won't go scene by scene. I'll just give you a little synopsis, I guess. So, from what I got out of this, we have two protagonists, Wolverine and Rogue. We aren't given much of an origin story for Wolverine. All we know is that he has a skeleton made out of a me metal called adamantium, and that he was experimented on, but he has no memory of what happened, or what his life was before the experiment. We are given hints of what happened, but we still don't have an entire picture of what actually happened. We get more of an origin story for Rogue. We learn that when she was young, she had a boyfriend and they had a kiss, and after that her boyfriend was put into a coma. And we learn that Rogue hurts anyone with a touch, and we learn that she cannot control it. The main villain of this movie is Magneto. Magneto feels like... Mutants are not accepted because they are different, and he thinks that the human race should be turned into mutants, so then they can understand what it feels like to be so different. We also have Charles Xavier, who has a different outlook on the situation. He believes that humans should not be turned into mutants, and he tries to be diplomatic. I like these two sides of the coin being shown because we could make up our own minds of who we believe to be right, Magneto or Charles. I personally agree with Charles, because by attacking the humans, we are just proving them right. We also learn that there is a special school for the gifted. On the outside, it's shown for people who are gifted, but on the inside, it's actually for mutants, and they are taught how to control their powers, as well being taught normal school subjects. There's really not that much to say about the story. There's a lot more story than action and I'm okay with that. This movie has a good message and it's quite a joy to watch. Now, let's get into the opinions that I have for this movie. I really enjoyed this movie. Most of the movie was really well done, but I will admit that towards the end a lot of convenient things happened. I will talk about the positives first, just because I don't want the negatives to outweigh the positives, because this was a really enjoyable movie. I'm going to start off by saying that I'm going to pretend like the other X-Men movies don't exist just for the sake of this review. So if I mention certain things that are not resolved in this movie but are later on, then I will still have those opinions just based off of this one movie. I gotta say, I really like the characterization of Wolverine. His character in this movie seems to be that he's tough on the outside but soft on the inside. I'm pretty sure in the comic books, he's more of this angry character that doesn't really care about anyone else but himself. In this movie, they changed the character to be a little softer, and in no way is this a bad thing. Wolverine seems to be the main protagonist of this movie, and the movie starts off with showing the tougher side of him. But the more we go through the movie, the more he starts to care about others rather than himself. It's a very smooth transition and it doesn't just abruptly happen. He meets Rogue and at first he really doesn't care for her, but then he starts to realize that they are a lot alike. By the end of the movie, Wolverine literally sacrifices himself for her. We also get little hints of his origin and he does not know what happened to him before he was injected with the adamantium. We do get the basis for that, but we do not get a resolution to that storyline. I also like the interpretation of the heroes that we are introduced to. The X-Men in the comics worked very well and it would be very hard to put these characters into live action without making them seem goofy. None of the characters seem goofy to me. I think the only one that seemed a little weird to me was Sabretooth. I think they made him look a little too much like a Sabretooth tiger. I feel like they should have made Sabretooth look more human-like than tiger-like. Because, for instance, we have Wolverine, and his powers are based off of the animal that is called a Wolverine. 
and they made him look human, so why would they not do that for Sabretooth? I guess because I'm talking about the designs, I guess I should talk about the X-Men overall. I'm honestly not a big fan of their outfits. They seem bland and dark to me. I have a feeling the reason why they made this outfit decision behind the scenes was because of the goofiness factor. Back when this movie was made, superhero movies weren't really connected to each other and they didn't have as much fan service as superhero movies have today. So I think they made the decision to have the outfits look more realistic just so then they can attract a larger audience. Because unfortunately, the general audience is going to see the classic X-Men outfits and they're going to think that all that looks really cheesy and it's probably not going to be good. For me though, I would have rather seen the classic X-Men outfits. Just because I feel like if you want a more authentic experience, they should at least look somewhat like their comic book counterparts. I mentioned earlier that towards the end of the movie, a lot more convenient things happened. I wanted to touch on that now. Most of the convenient stuff that happened was during the final fight scene. I feel like I should provide some context before I point out what my issue is. So earlier in the movie, Rogue runs to a train station so that then she can run away. Charles Xavier finds out where she is and he sends Storm and Cyclops to go and get Rogue back. When Storm and Cyclops get to the train station, they are then attacked by Sabretooth and Toad. Sabretooth is attacking Storm and choking her and she cannot use her powers. Cyclops gets hit by Toad and knocks his glasses off. Because of this, Cyclops shoots his laser beams into the roof and blows a hole in the roof. After the roof is blown off, Storm is able to use her powers to fight against Sabretooth. So now that I have provided some background as to how Storm's powers work, I can tell you what my main issues were with this final battle. There's two separate scenes in the final battle. One is at the base of the Statue of Liberty, and one is at the top of the Statue of Liberty. At the bottom of the statue, this battle had Mystique and Toad. Mystique fights Wolverine, and Toad fights everyone else. The one weird thing is that Toad is able to take out all of the X-Men, which is a little weird because you have Jean Grey, Cyclops, and Storm fighting Toad, and Toad is able to take out all of them, which is really weird. So after Toad defeats everyone, he throws Storm down an elevator shaft. Fine, she can't control her powers because she's inside, and she has no view of the sky, so that makes sense. So, we established earlier that Storm needs to have a clear view of the sky in order to use her powers. That makes sense to me. After a little bit, Storm comes back up the elevator shaft using her powers. But something is funny here. There is no clear view of the sky from where she was. So how was she able to use her powers? You may think that I'm being picky, which I did originally. I think that yes, I was being a little picky. So I thought I'd just let that go. But then something like this happened again. Later on, we are at the top of the statue. Everyone gets captured by Magneto, and they're all restrained against the inside of the statue with metal beams. And that makes sense. His Magneto can control metal, so obviously he can restrain them. And they wouldn't be able to really use their powers, except one person, Storm and potentially Jean Grey. So again, we are left with this situation. Storm can't use her powers because she cannot see the sky. But remember, earlier, when we were on the bottom of the statue, Storm could use her powers, and she could not see the sky either. Conveniently after there's a hole blown into the Statue of Liberty, you can see the sky, and she uses her powers. I have no issues with the fact that she would not be able to use her powers because she can't see the sky. That makes absolute sense, but once they establish that, they should keep that as a common theme and not just have her use her powers and not use her powers whenever it's convenient for the plot. You heard me say that Jean Grey could have done something, and yes, you very well could have done something. It may not have worked for long, but 
it would have worked just for a short amount of time. So when Magneto restrained them with the metal, nobody else had powers like him. So they couldn't have done anything. But Jean Grey has telekinetic powers, so she could have just thrown Magneto and they could have escaped. Remember, the only powers Magneto has is that he can control metal. He can't control anything else, and he doesn't have special powers besides controlling metal. So, she could have easily just thrown him and knocked him out. And that would have been it. They could have gone up, saved Rogue, and done. I did really like the end battle, but there's just a few things that bothered me enough that I had to mention it in the review. Because a lot of this just seemed like it was there to push the plot forward. I have two more little nitpicks. And then that's it. So in the end, we are given multiple scenes where they try to set up the next X-Men movie. And I think it's very well executed. The one thing though that is very weird to me is Mystique and how it ended with her character in this movie. So in the final battle where they are in the statue, Wolverine beat her by stabbing her through the stomach. And then she dies. Or so we think. So at the end of the movie, they find a dead security guard inside of the statue. And the security guard has three stab wounds in the stomach. So we can only assume that this is obviously going to be Mystique because she can shapeshift. Obviously she can't shapeshift if she's dead. So this means that she is confirmed to still be alive. As far as I know, we were never shown that she could have super healing and survive such a wound. So it makes no sense how she was stabbed in the stomach and she survived. That, it does not make sense. I know it's used to show us that, oh my god, she is still alive. What is she going to do next? And yeah, that's pretty neat. But they could have done it in a better way. The next one is just a nitpick. Again, these aren't real issues that affect the story and make the movie bad. Not at all. It's just little things that they could have done a little bit differently. So the next part was that one of the senators that didn't like mutants and wanted them in jail and all was killed earlier in the movie and now Mystique has turned into the senator. She actually does do a good thing and says that the senator was wrong and that he was retracting all of his statements and that mutants are free to live amongst everyone else which I think is a really good thing that she did. It was on the news and the X-Men do treat this as a threat because they're obviously going to be questioning on what she is up to. It's the way that they figure out that it's not the senator and it's actually Mystique. On the news they obviously have cameras on the senator and then we see that the eyes turn yellow which is the color of Mystique's eyes. It's funny because everyone in the New York area are watching the same news channel and wouldn't they notice that the senator's eyes suddenly turning yellow and then turn back to normal? Wouldn't that be a little weird to see that on the news? I feel like a lot of people would be questioning, but hey, it works in the situation, I guess. One more thing. There's a part in this movie where Mystique takes the form of Bobby, a person who became friends with Rogue in the beginning of the movie. In the beginning of the movie, Bobby was very nice to her because he noticed that she was introverted and that she was very shy. We didn't really see much of this character, but we all knew that he started to care for Rogue. In the middle of the movie, Mystique takes the form of Bobby and tells Rogue that nobody likes her anymore and that she needs to leave and that Professor X is furious. Wouldn't Rogue question why he was suddenly so mean to her? And wouldn't she question on how he knows what Professor X feels? At the end of the movie, we see that Rogue and Bobby are friends again, but we aren't given a scene of them making up. We're just supposed to assume that Rogue forgives him for all of the horrible things that he said to her, because you wouldn't just be friends with somebody who said such awful things to your face. I've done a lot of negative blabbering, so let me speak more of the good parts of this movie. I like how they establish all the characters very well, and they don't rush anything in this movie. It's all perfectly balanced and it's the perfect runtime for this movie. I would have liked to see more of Storm for some reason. She wasn't really a big part of this movie. I know towards the end she utilizes her powers more, but in the beginning 
She was just there to be there. She didn't really talk that much throughout the whole movie, and I wish we got more out of her. I also really like Rogue. She was a very relatable character, and you can understand what she was going through, especially if you're a teenager. That's another thing I wanted to mention that I liked about this movie. The undertone of feeling alone, and then finally finding the people that you belong with. Rogue starts out with having powers that nobody understands, and they treat her like she's a monster, even though we all know she's not a monster. She has a hard time being accepted, and she just wants to be a loner, kind of a lot like us. I like the fact that in the end, she is accepted for who she is, and that she's happier, even though she's different. I really like that message, especially in the superhero movie, because let's admit, a lot of people who watch these movies watch them to escape and having a movie telling them that it's going to be okay no matter what their differences are is a pretty good message. I know that X-Men have always been a good way for artists to express their opinions on how the world works and stuff and this movie does that very well without it being shoved down your throat. I also really like that there was a fight scene between Wolverine and Sabretooth on the top of the Statue of Liberty. I'm pretty sure that in the comics, Wolverine and Sabretooth were arch enemies, so it's pretty cool that they were able to fight each other in live action, so we can all see it with our own eyes. So, what did I think about X-Men? Honestly, I enjoyed it quite a lot. I'm so used to seeing modern day Marvel movies with all the cool effects and fight scenes that I sometimes forget that the story does matter. I noticed that there is a lot more story in superhero movies from the early 2000s and I really enjoy that. Yes, I like to see cool fight scenes and all that, but sometimes it's okay to have more story than action. This movie has a perfect balance between story and action and we get a lot out of our characters. The original X-Men movies will always be a classic and I am happy to say that in today's standards, this movie still holds up really well. I would definitely recommend watching this movie. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next review.